Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to incorporate fire storage in Python. And since uh, uh, Firebase has recently updated from version 8 to version 9, I personally found that uh, finding how to incorporate fire storage with Python was extremely difficult for me and took quite a few days to find a solution to. So hopefully this video just makes that process much more quicker for you and you only have to watch this video to get what you knew expected from your Python code. So all I did was create like a basic main.py and it just prints hello. Very, very straightforward. What we're first going to do is just set up Firebase. So you're going to go over to the Firebase website and if you don't know the link, it's in the comments. A description box below. You can click go to council, create a project, and I'm just going to call this on a Firebase storage project. And accept the terms. Very good idea to actually review the terms that you're agreeing to. But since I already did that, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that part. We're going to go ahead and continue. This is your choice. I don't need it for this project. Just create project. It's going to take some time to create. And perfect, my Firebase storage project is ready. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press continue and it's going to bring you over to this dashboard screen. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is over, go over to project settings and you're gonna want to go over to service account. And you need to create a service account because this is how you're going to be accessing the Firebase storage from Python. Because if you go over here, you notice that there's only three options, iOS, Android, and web. Python doesn't fit those descriptions. So that's why we're going over to the service account. I'm gonna create a service account. And you're gonna notice that it creates this page for us. Go over to the Python section and you want to generate new private key, and then it's going to download a file to you. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the video here because I don't wanna reveal my private key. Once you have it downloaded, just move it into that file directory. And this is a super long name. I'm just gonna rename it to key.json just because it's much easier to reference inside code, don't you think? So you can also just go ahead and copy this code right over here because we're going to be using it in order to just set up our basic Firebase admin. So go over here, replace your hello with these lines of code. What this is doing is that's importing the Firebase admin, which is how you're going to be accessing Firebase, as you can probably tell from the storage like name. And then you also want to import credentials, which is how you're going to verify that you're the one accessing the database and it's not some hacker. This file to um, path to service key is just going to be the location of where your key JSON is in, in relation to your main.py. So, so in our scenario, this is going to be key.json. Okay, the next step you're going to want to do is go back over here, go over, and I'm just going to just create like a web project um, just so that we can have access to the storage. And just continue to council. And we're going to be using the build section storage and press get started. And for now you can start in test mode or production mode, just because in production mode, we've already set up that key.json verification. But if you just wanna get it working and then worry about that later, or this test mode later, then you can do this as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and do test mode because this is just a sample project of mine. It's not a legitimate project in publishing. And then press done. So you can notice that it's going to go ahead and load. And once you have this set up, what you're going to want to do is just copy this link. Go back over here and create this dictionary as a second parameter in initialize app. The reason you're doing this is because you're showing your Python code 
where the bucket is because you can create a, a bucket is basically um, it's like a folder inside your file explorer. It's where the file is uh, of a group of files can be stored. So if you want multiple, uh, you can also create folders inside these buckets, or you can create multiple buckets. For example, you can create like a bucket of uh, like profile images, or you can create like a bucket for each user. If it's that it's how your website works. Um, or if that's how your program works. So you can add multiple buckets, which is why you have to specify which bucket you're doing. So you're gonna go ahead and say right over here, storage bucket. Oh, sorry. You're gonna do a semicolon and then you're going to paste. Okay, that is not what we wanted to paste. You just wanted to paste this part out. Oh. If you manage to get this, that's what you're going to want to copy. Okay, perfect. And you just want to remove this JS at the beginning. So you only want like the name .applespot.com. This is basically just verifying the fact that it's not a hacker getting into the program and it's you getting into the program. So this is just setting up credentials. You're not actually accessing the storage yet. The next step you're going to want to do is just have app equal to this Firebase initialize app because that's how you're going to access images. Inside this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to just access the image without actually downloading the image. This is personally a problem that I have faced because there's going to be tons of resources on how to get that image downloaded. But in my personal experience, there aren't really lots of ones that tell you just how not to download the image because you don't want to download images from your users. You just want to use it, right? Or at least that's how I based in my personal experience. So that's why I'm going to be addressing this video. If you just want to download that image, I'll post a link to a solution inside the description box for you to check out. So after app, you also need to import something else from Firebase admin. You want to import storage and storage is obviously accessing the Firebase storage. I went ahead and uploaded an image to storage so that we can test out our code working. So go back over here to your code and we're going to create a bucket. And this is just going to access the bucket that you initialized inside your app. The next thing you're going to want to do is access that image that you want to access. If you want to access like a specific image that you know the name of already, you can do what I did here and you can just import this image name directly. If you want to import custom you know, names, then you can do import sys, uh, which stands for system, and then you can just do sys argument if the first argument if you're passing in parameters into this function. They both work. I'm just going to do the name because I already have my name set up right over here. So what you're going to want to do is say blob is equal to bucket dot get blob and then here is the image name. So mine is just the wiz logo. So I'm just going to say the wiz dot png. There isn't really a way to verify the fact that we've accessed this so far. So I'm just going to leave it at this and then later, just a little bit later in the tutorial, I'll show you how to verify the fact that you got the image at this step. Here's the thing with the blob. You can notice that we just get blob, but uh, what even is like a blob? So this is actually Firebase Storage's version of doing array of bits. So what we can do is we can convert this to an array of bits and then, um, oh, sorry, bytes. And then um, what we, uh, we can take the, uh, that array and then we can convert it into an image. So it's going to basically be, sorry, blob, to array to image. So this is that first step with the blob. 
The next step we're going to want to do incorporates another library. So I'm just going to import numpy as np. And you can just import numpy, it doesn't really matter. I just like shorten in the name because this is a little long. So we can use this np in order to access this image, like the physical image, because right now we just got that blob. We first need, uh, we want the actual image itself. So we need to convert it to an array, which you use np for, and then we'll convert it to the literal image. So in order to do this, we can say that the array is equal to np, which is the library we just imported, dot from buffer blob dot download as string np dot u int eight. What did we just do here? What we did is that we converted this blob into a string that you converted into an array. And the reason we did this u and int eight is because that's how the um, uh, that's how the string was encoded. So you're just decoding it to an array. And oh, oh, uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is take that image and uh, take that array, which we basically took the string and we didn't exactly decode it. We decoded it and encoded it again. So that's just like the uh, we're going to decode in the ne uh, fully decode in the next step. In order to access the image itself, I'm going to import another library, and this library is going to be import cv2. cv2 is basically OpenCV, which is an image detection library. Even if you don't want to do image detection, it will allow you to actually access the image that you want to use. So you can just say image is equal to cv2 dumb m decode of that array that we just first passed in. And then you can pass in a specific color here. So I'm just going to do color of b gr2 55. Uh, so let's just quickly walk through. This gets the blob, which is basically Firebase storage's way of getting an image. This converts it to an array of bytes, which we can use to get the actual image. So those are our three steps. And if uh, that's all we want to do, great. I just want to verify the fact that I did actually get the image. So in order to do that, you can do cv2 dot image show and then you can pass in image and this takes in another parameter that's just like a name and then you have to do um cv2 dot wait key of zero this just allows it says that if you press any key then it will close the image so that it doesn't automatically close it okay Let's run our code. Okay, you notice that we're getting some errors. So let's just go through and walk through some of these errors. So the first one is saying that there's actually no file directory called key.json. And in order to solve this, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this a folder to Firebase Storage Python, copy this name, and just put that name there. And then perfect. You can see that we accessed our image. This image here, you can see is just the name of the window right over here. And then if you press any key, then it will close the image. So that's why we did the wait key. So just kind of as a recap, we were able to first verify the fact that we're the ones accessing the database and not a hacker. And then we were able to convert 
the image from the storage to a blob array of bytes and the actual image. So I really hope this video is helpful and saves you lots of time researching and just makes the entire coding process more fun. See you in the next video.